Hi, I'm Sean Waterman and you're watching CyberScoop TV. Today we're here at the McAfee Security Through Innovation Summit at the Ritz-Carlton in Pentagon City and I'm joined by Paul Reed from Intercept. Good morning. Hey Paul, thanks for coming by. Thank you for having me. So tell me about Intercept. What, what, what do you guys do to help the feds improve their cyber security? So Intercept is kind of a unique company. We do uh, machine learning, behavior analytics, and we're very fortunate to be part of the Incutel portfolio companies. So we're trying to oh. bring a CIA and, and the InQtel, just for our viewers that might not be familiar, is, is the CIA's uh, venture capital. That's arm. correct. That's correct. So we're working with them to bring uh, user behavior analytics to the federal government. And we're really doing that through a big data architecture platform that allows us to bring in literally billions of cybersecurity events at a time and generate really actionable information for the cybersecurity professional. So by doing that, we're hoping to raise the bar of the level of cybersecurity we see in the federal government. And of course, our partnership with McAfee is very important as well. Our work with their data exchange layer is really enabling us to be a larger part of a cybersecurity solution for the federal government. And, and that D DXL, that data exchange layer, that's where you're getting the the, the, the bits of, of, of information about these billions of cyber events that you're, that you're then churning and analyzing? Yeah, so, so, so the DXL fabric allows us to receive and send events across it, which is quite important, right? We need that bi-directional communication to be effective in the security analytics we need to do. And we're finding that the scale of it is sufficient enough to actually achieve our goals, and that's really important for us. So public-private partnership is often talked about as the key to cyber security, but but what, what does that really mean for you guys at Intercept anyway? What, how are you advancing that? Yeah, so we see today that the federal government's done a really great job in their public-private partnerships, in particular bringing that learning to the large enterprises they take and support. And, you know, the federal government has a set of resources that not every company has access to. And particularly if we look at process and industrial design, industrial engineering, those type of skill sets are not necessarily available to all organizations. And we know the risk of my OT is only growing and becoming larger. So those public-private partnerships are very, very important. But what we do see happening is we have a need now, not just for the federal government to be working with these large enterprises, but it's all companies of all sizes. Even the small to medium ones are important. So take, for example, a small utility company. They have the same level of cyber threat as a large one. And really the impact on the economy of an attack on them can be just as large as an attack on a larger player. So we really need to think about how do we bring that public-private partnership to the entire chain, all the way from the suppliers to the providers that we use every day in our economy. And that's really important to take and grow. Can I just pick up on something sure. there? You talked about the small utility, the impact being as large. That's because of public perception, isn't it? Well, because a big part of the impact of, of an actual cyber attack on a utility will be, you know, the public perception rather than the uh, uh, anything else. Well, all, all cyber attacks are of, are of equal importance. But we have seen in the past where a failure of a small utility can have a multiplying effect across the entire nation. So if you remember the blackout of several years ago, it started in a small right. power provider. Right. And because of how they're interconnected, the failure escalated through the whole system. The same thing could happen with a cyber attack. We have a small attack take place on a small utility that could have consequential effects throughout the entire economy. So we really need to watch for that. Let's talk about, m about that uh, machine learning and about, and that's the key to automation in cybersecurity, isn't it? And we've heard the speakers today talk about how, you know, automation really is the key. But are federal agencies embracing that? So we were seeing a great uptake in that. And I think our work with McAfee is really helping drive that into the federal space. Again, that adoption of DXL is so important and really trying to automate the threat detection and threat response becomes so important. We know that the days of defense in depth are done, right? We can't build walls high enough and moats deep enough to keep the bad guys out. So we have to assume they're gonna get in, but when they get in, we have to detect them as quickly as possible. And really that's where our company comes into play in conjunction with McAfee to take and deliver that. So the faster we can detect the threat, the faster we can respond to it. And what we find out is it's no longer looking for their traditional indicators of compromise, you know, a known hash or, or, a bad be or, a, or a bad action taking place. It's really the behaviors we're looking at, right? So regardless of how the compromise takes place, whether it's through a zero day, a known attack, spear phishing, the behaviors we see afterwards are always consistent, right? It's, 
get a foothold, escalate an account, move east-west, find the data, stage it, and steal it, right? So regardless of how the attacks take place, those behaviors are consistent. It's those changes in behaviors that allow us to see what takes place. And in seeing those changes in behaviors, we can now invoke automation to help respond to that. And again, leveraging the McAfee DXL to be able to do that is really important for us. So um, what are one or two things that, that uh, the agencies you work with in government uh, could do to improve their cybersecurity. I mean, obviously, you've, I'm sure you have a laundry list of, sure. of stuff they could do, but just the most important cup, your top two. So I think one of the things we heard again echoed here today was the need for more rapid adoption, right? The pace at which government moves sometimes does not allow them to have solutions to threats as they happen, almost in real time. So that by the time they identify something, find out the solution they want, it can take too long to take and do. So we need to find a way to speed up that, that process. And that really leads to the second part, which is how fast we can do procurement today, right? If we look at the level of, of importance of procuring a solution to a cyber attack, we need to give it the same level as a kinetic attack, right? So we need to start thinking about cyber in the same way as we would a, a traditional attack today, and really maybe moving that procurement closer to the people who have the needs for it and allowing them more freedom to find the solutions more quickly to address their needs sooner. Paul, thank you very much indeed. Thank you for your time. And you can uh, see more of us uh, at cyberscoop.com or on our YouTube channel.